Atlas developers love printf debugging, and so do we as reverse engineers. It helps us understanding binaries without even reading code. The bad part about Apple's log messages is that they are put together in a weird way, which is not supported by common reverse engineering tools. So let's look at this very simple example written in C, which calls or as a log to then just log three different arguments. So we have the format string and then a variable number of arguments, in our case, a string and two numbers. Remember them, they are 1, 3, 7 and 42. This looks super simple, right? And it should be trivial to reverse engineer with tools like Ghidra and Frida. All right, let's open it in Ghidra. And no, it really doesn't look that nice. Like the numbers do have weird other numbers in between. And it just is not the same that we had. So there is a function that we didn't actually program. It's called OSLogImpl. And this is now called with our format string. And then there is a local stack variable and a number. And all our arguments, they went to the stack. There is a pointer reference to the world string. And then there's also directly the numbers 1, 3, 7, and 42. And in between, there is these other really odd looking numbers. What happened here? Like, we just compiled a program and it looks different. So it must be the compiler. Or in our case, Apple's Clang implementation. We can also just directly call Apple's Clang preprocessor and then would see a very verbose variant of the program that we can clean up a little bit to make it more readable. And in this more readable version, we would see, first of all, there is a call to OS log type enabled, checking if the log variant that we have is actually being logged or not. And then OS log impl is called, which we just also saw in Gitra, very similar. And then we can see two calls to compiler built-ins that we didn't see in Ghidra. They are called built-in OS log format buffer size and built-in OS log format. Luckily, Apple's Clang implementation is open source, so we can just look into the source code and figure out where these built-ins are implemented. And if we look in there, the built-in OS log format is actually calling into a function that is called compute OS log buffer layout. And there, the layout computation is based on the format string and the variable number of arguments. And it's only there during compile time. And this layout is then used to create a couple of stores. And each of the stores that we create corresponds to one of the stack variables in Ghidra. As you can see here, we start with a summary and the number of arguments, followed by a list of items that each have a descriptor and a size. So that means that our string from before, the word string or the numbers would know all of them have a separate descriptor and size. And the descriptor somehow describes the argument type and how this is defined in the OS log header file. The most interesting function in here is called get descriptor byte, and it returns a byte that is consisting of an upper and a lower half. The lower half here contains information about if the information is public or private, being set to one or two. And the upper part is then describing the actual type. And the type can be from zero to four, which stands for scalar kind, count kind, string kind, pointer kind. And there's even a special kind for objective C objects. Let's say you see the value hex 32. The three means pointer kind and the two means public. So public sometimes is also just not set. So you would see a zero instead. Anyway, this would be logged. However, if you would see a one, it means private. And then it doesn't appear in the logs as the value, but is replaced with a string just called private. So if you see private strings in your logs, that means the type here was set to one in the end. With the knowledge that we just gained from Apple's Clang implementation, we can now understand what the stack buffer that we printed with Frida means. So the two is just a summary byte and three means the number of arguments. And that is pretty much correct. We had one string and two numbers. Now we start with the string 
string kind starts with two and then there's a zero because we didn't specify if it is public or private so we have hex 20 and it has a length of eight because we then just put a pointer to the string here. The other two numbers are actually scalar kinds and scalar kinds are represented by a zero. We didn't specify if it is public or private, so it's just a full zero. And both of them have only the length of four bytes. And then after the length, you can see that we have the numbers 42 and 157 in hex. We can understand what the buffer was. Great. Want to try this on your own? I published a free script and it prints all the format strings, including the arguments. And it also skips the checks for the log types. So even if debug logs are not enabled in the program where you attach it to, they will be printed without installing any debug profile or similar. If you want to learn more about mobile reverse engineering, I will be giving a couple of trainings this year. You can find all of them on reversing.training. And if you cannot afford a training, there might be a chance because I'm also giving some free seats away for underrepresented group. That means I also give black hoodie trainings for women in cybersecurity. And I also have a few seats at Objective by the Sea for the Objective V program. So thanks for checking this out and please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.